Ganesh Bell, President of Uptake, welcome to Stanford. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Thank you for having me here. Well, tell us a little bit about Uptake. What is the company and who are your customers? What are you uh, accomplishing in the digital industrial transformation? Sure. So Uptake, uh, we have a mission, a world that always works. Uh, what that means is simply we are in industries where they're asset-centric. Mm -hmm. These are the infrastructure that powers the world. And we build a AI, machine learning, and IoT platform, on top of which we're building applications. And we're adding deep industrial content. Content meaning we understand that in many of these industries, there are critical assets. So we have a database of how all these assets are going to fail. There's about, we've cataloged about 55,000 ways these assets mm -hmm. are going to fail across many different industries. We like to think of it as 55,000 ways the world will stop working. So mm -hmm. we apply machine learning and data science to make sure that we can actually predict and therefore, we can drive outcomes for customers, either it's uptime, reliability, but from there, we can optimize their entire business. Well, now previously, you worked at GE. You were the chief digital officer for a while. You worked in, in uh, GE Power. Why did you leave GE to go to a startup, which is now a big startup like Uptake? Actually, the most important thing is why I came to GE in the first place. Okay. Um, so uh, I remember when GE called me more than uh, four and a half years ago, they were trying this idea of software. I think Jeff, that time the chairman of GE had a belief that data and software will fundamentally change the industry. Mm -hmm. And I had a similar belief that software will reimagine businesses and industries as we know it. Mm -hmm. So I actually ended up selling GE the idea of digital and ended up being the first chief digital officer and building the power digital business. So it was really a moment of do I believe my own bullshit <laughs> that businesses and software will be reimagined with mm -hmm. software. And I got a chance to go do that at the biggest scale for a long time. and. Uh, for about more than four years, built a successful business in digital for power, which became the blueprint for all of GE Digital. Mm -hmm. And uh, towards the tail end uh, of my career, where you know some of the biggest believers like Jeff had left, and some of my bosses had left, but I still believe that GE was a fantastic uh, company and a great company. But I also believe that the business model of doing digital was directly in conflict with the existing business model of doing services. So I actually believe that this has to be done in a fiercely independent way. Okay. And uh, Uptake was the best thing out there, and I joined forces with the uh, founder. All right, so if you look at Uptake, it looks like any digital company we could see anywhere in the world, here in Silicon Valley, Beijing, Shanghai, mm -hmm. uh, Berlin. How do you bring domain knowledge of the industrial areas that you're serving with a largely, what looks like a digital DNA company? That's a great question because uh, if you think about all these industries, they've all operated with data to some extent, mm -hmm. except they've been about first principle physics-based analytics, mm -hmm. right? And that was good enough to operate the world where we only used a little bit of the data. But in the last five years, I would say machine learning and cloud technologies have caught up to a point where we can process all of the data. Mm -hmm. And with machine learning, we can actually surpass first principles physics-based analytics to get to truly predictive analytics. Mm -hmm. And so you really need machine learning AI at the core of what you do. And that's what Uptake had done. In addition, we had actually bought domain expertise with operators. So our head of energy was the head of uh, uh, you know, power, mm -hmm. president of power at Exelon one point, And he was also the chief innovation officer and chief information officer. So knowing that domain matters quite a bit. And we used to do ads in the past that our data scientists wear steel toe boots. Mm -hmm. And it's actually technically true. Our data scientists visit a wind farm or a mining operations. Uh, so it's combining the domain and knowing people who know the industrial aspect. That's why we also bought a company called Asset Performance Technologies, where it was about 32,000 man hours of domain expertise, cataloging every single critical asset, how it fails, what the preventive maintenance strategies mm -hmm. is. So digitizing that and learning on top of that uh, is really where the value is. Last week, we had Sam Allen, the CEO of Caterpillar, visit our systems leadership class, and he talked about what they're doing on digitization. How does a company like Uptake figure out where in the technical stack you want to play and own certain things and where you want to partner with your industrial customers? Actually, uh, Caterpillar is a customer of ours. We started our uh, Uptake started the journey with Caterpillar. There are many divisions of Caterpillar that deploy our software. Um, where we decide to play is very simple, which is there are many companies that sell enabling technology. Uh, in fact, uh, I would say the industrial IoT, there is a whole new stack that's emerging right now. It's very similar to how it was in enterprise software in the 90s, where there was database servers, app servers, integration servers, analytic servers, applications, and so on and so forth, right? portal servers and everything. We kind of see that again, which is data aggregation at the industrial sensor level. There is edge where you can run computing there. And 
there's also all the layers of contextualizing data, app platforms, analytical platforms, tools, and apps. What we do is platform, okay. which is really about software to build software. Okay. And so we can help companies that are uh, in industries where they're actually digitally backwards. So they need high productivity, almost like bulletproof kind of a platform where it's like bumper bowling, where every time you bowl, you're going to hit a pin. So if you build an app on our platform, you will build an app. It's not left to some uh, IT magic. And on top of that, we're building applications. But where we really play is outcomes. Yeah. So we focus on how do we impact the financial statement of our customers, which means either reduct, reducing operating and maintenance costs or improving their output or improving their uptime. So if we start there at the CEO CXO level, we can work backwards. We're not a Azure. We're not AWS. We love all of those guys. We run on top of that. All right, so you talked about enterprise software and the enterprise internet, and some, you, know, you were at Oracle for a while at SAP. Mm -hmm. How is the industrial internet different than how we might think about the enterprise, of, uh, the enterprise internet or the consumer internet? Uh, it's a great question. Actually, if you take a step back, um, comp enterprise software is not a very long-running discipline. It's only a few decades old, right? And I would argue that we're actually at a seminal moment in just history of enterprise software. Why do I believe that? In the last several decades, enterprise software was all about humans entering data mm -hmm. and automating business processes. That was true till now. But now we're in a world where machines are generating data, robots and drones are increasingly at work with wearables, and humans augmented by machines are generating more data. So we believe that we're going to be in a paradigm of where it's about automating decisions versus automating business processes. That's fundamentally different. And the next thing is we see that in many of these industries that have been left behind, industrial world especially, there is a separation that's happening between what I call the physical model of the industry, which is assets and labor and parts and people, and the economic model. More importantly, the future economic model. If you take a utility, for example, it's no longer about producing electrons. Mm -hmm. It's about selling services beyond the electron. So as the gap becomes wider, there's a bigger value creation opportunity. And I also believe that the technology shift is happening. If you think about enterprise software history, when we went from mainframe to client server, it was a new market. When we went from client server to distributed computing, new market. When we went from distributed to SaaS, it was a replacement market. Okay. So far, we have only redid what we did in a new architecture. We never reimagined. I think that reimagination is going to happen right now, and that's why we believe it's going to be very different. So one of the things we've learned about the industrial market is it's not as quick to change as some other market segments. Yeah. How does an independent company like Uptake think about its rate of growth? You've taken venture capital money. How do you think about traditional metrics that might come from a technology company but applying to a market that sometimes takes a little bit longer to evolve and accept new ways of doing things? Yeah, so startups are going to be always different than large companies where when I was at GE and running a very large p and it was about operating profit every quarter, right? Mm -hmm. uh, whereas in a startup, it's really about growth, customer acquisition, and onboarding new customers. So we have lots of proxy metrics. We actually measure things like, for example, how many hours are our algorithms trained on? Mm. For example, some of our predictive uh, machine learning algorithms are uh, trained on about 1.2 billion hours of operating data. Right? That's an important metric for us. How many models are we deploying? How quickly can we deploy new data science models? But at the end of the day, we're going to measure things like orders, bookings, and how we're growing the customer. But you're right that these industries are long sales cycle. Um, so the question is, can we actually do quick wins? Uh, and also, there are some fast movers. Sometimes we'll do lumpy big deals. And the art is moving from the lumpy big deals to a volume revenue engine. And I think that's the real challenge. Well, Ganesh, it's fascinating to see how Uptake is entering this market as an outside player. We really appreciate your coming to Stanford to discuss systems leadership, and thank you so much for the time. It's great thank to see you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. All the best.